Red garbage can, you look like somebody just walked over your grave. <laughs> yes, Doc Holiday Special. This is the Cimarron 12 gauge called the Doc Holiday. Pretty cool, made by Petter Soli. Made in Italy, okay? Is it beautiful or what? Look at that thing. Color case hardened and everything. Nice piece of wood. Nice piece of rubber slipped over the stock. <laughs> yeah, man, we're gonna shoot this thing and talk about it. I thought it deserved a cowboy hat because it really looks like a cowboy gun, doesn't it? Uh, I'll take that off so you can get a look at the, the firearm unadulterated. There it is. 12 gauge double hammer. Doc Holiday. yeah, that's what they call it, the Doc Holiday. And, uh, you know, if you know anything about Doc Holliday, you know he actually used one of these in the gunfight at the OK Corral. It's pretty much authenticated. Uh, it's not just uh, myth, more myth from the dime novels. It's uh, apparently uh, what he used there, handed to him by Virgil Earp, as depicted in the movies, from what I have read, okay? I was not there. I am almost old enough to have been there, but I, I wasn't there. So, yeah, this is Cimarron, and, uh, <laughs> and so does this look like something I would shoot? Nah, probably does, doesn't it? You've seen me out here, John, with all sorts of uh, guns from the Wild West, and uh, they're one of my favorites, and I'll talk about this one. You know, the old double barrel shotgun, you take them apart to clean them. You know, they're just so simple to disassemble, to, to actually pack up and, and ship or whatever you're doing, and then to clean. Uh, they just don't get much simpler and more fun. This one actually has an imprinter on underneath there. Cimarron Firearms. Yeah, Fredericksburg, Texas. You got uh, designed, finished, and proof tested in Italy. Yeah. So you got kind of a matte finish on the barrel. I think I'd rather... I guess it's more tactically correct, right? I think I'd prefer more of a shiny finish or a nice blue finish on that that uh, wasn't so subdued. Because you got beautiful wood and color case hardening and all that on this thing. So this is cool. I, I wasn't all that familiar with it, to tell you the truth. But uh, hey, I'm always glad to shoot a shotgun, modern or old. Now I need a little more length on it, but it feels good. It feels good at that length. Feels very, very good. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna right away, I'm gonna put a round or two, I've got different ammo here. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and take a chance to shoot that. Because <laughs> I just, I, I tend to not do it sometimes. So I'm gonna cock the hammer, I'm gonna put my ears in, and I'm gonna see if I can blow out the bullseye. How's that? Now that target has no bullseye. I could shoot at it all day. I could back up about 80 yards and shoot over my back, you know, with a mirror and claim every time that I'm just putting him right through that hole, right in the bullseye. So, yeah, this is, uh, this is fun, a double barrel. Everybody should own one. Yeah, you really should. Uh, yeah, tell your spouse, whoever that might be, or your friend, or your dad, your mom, your kids, whoever it is you need to tell or whoever you need to get permission from that, <laughs> that you need a double barrel shotgun in your life, okay? 10 gauge, probably not 10, 12, 410, 20, whatever. All right, so this is pretty cool. I'm a, I've not shot slugs in it. It's not necessarily a slug gun, but I'll, I'll try it before we quit. I think I got some number four here I'm gonna shoot. One thing I don't like about it right away, I, I love the gun. Uh, two negatives, two, ma two negatives, okay? I appreciate, I'll be nice first. I really appreciate Cimarron. They may lead the pack uh, of all the folks that import firearms from Italy and everything in terms of uh, design and variety of designs, uh, authenticity and a lot of their firearms and that kind of thing. Uh, been doing it a long time. Uh, and it's just wonderful that we get firearms like this, you know, uh, the old West guns or whatever, and replicas that are, yeah, pretty much exact replicas because the originals are expensive. A lot of them you don't want to shoot because they're so old and valuable. And uh, some of them that 
I've loaded it. You could shoot okay, but they're just very, very expensive, you know, collectible. So, so anyway, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, compliment uh, them first before I uh, hammer this hammer gun. Two negatives. One is the expense. It is very expensive. It uh, MSRP is over seventeen hundred dollars. You ready for that? So, if you do get permission to buy a double-barreled coach gun <laughs> from somebody in your family, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you might not get permission to buy this one. I don't know. Uh, pretty expensive, uh, but it is really. I have to say, it's nice. It's it's well done. Uh, not just thrown together even the color case hardening looks better than a lot of what I have seen come out of Italy uh, anyway, That was a general slam wasn't sorry about that, but some of it's really uh, uh, Kind of lame and some of it's nice But anyway, that's one negative the other negative is in the operation of it and it, I guess it's a safety I have never seen a uh, breakdown shotgun like this where once you break it down where you have to work the lever to get it back up okay so i can't i guess that's intentional i mean i don't think it's because it's broken or anything wrong with it uh you just have to work the lever again or it won't go back up so if you're speed loading let's say you're in a cowboy match and you got your belt i didn't put all that stuff on today i mean i should have okay i get the shells out and of course it doesn't have the ejectors to sling them because it's uh you know more authentic get those out of there you pop these in and you're getting ready to shoot again <gasps> well oh, gotta hit that or you can't get it back in action okay so just something to be aware of uh, especially if you're in cowboy action shooting or you're planning to take one of these into combat of any kind <laughs> so let's put it let's shoot a number four you want to uh, I love to shoot garbage cans and things I guess you figured that out over the years haven't you whenever we have a shotgun there's usually a bucket or something involved, right? And here we have an old ammo can and uh, a couple of pots on it. <laughs> there we go. That second shot took care of things. I shot, I guess, a little high on that first one. Took care of the red bowling pin. Cool. Get a little bit of kick with that, of course. So pretty nice. And uh, you know, one thing I need to shoot, I've got a couple of rounds in my back pocket. I am going to shoot, no I'm not, because there's a two by four target stand behind it. I was gonna shoot her though, just wanted to mention them because uh, I currently have two of their holsters on me. My phone holster, pocket holster, sometimes I have the flapjack. They make great concealment holsters, uh, and well, or non-concealment, if you wanna wear an outside the belt. Or even inside the belt. It doesn't have to be concealed, of course, totally, depending on where you live. But, uh, or if you got some woods, it doesn't matter where you live, right? You can wear it however you want. But anyway, really appreciate their support. Great little Kydex holsters. All right, so, yeah, I, I don't want to blow my target stand up there. I've done that before, made that mistake before. What is that lid doing hanging there? <laughs> what is that bucket doing hanging there? It's not hanging there now. Oh, it's fun. Yeah, so, oh, smoke. Gun smoke. Gun smoke. Double barrel shotgun. You know, back in the Wild West, speaking of the Wild West, you just had to have respect for a, a double barrel. And that's why they call them stagecoach guns, right? Riding shotgun, stagecoach gun. If someone's riding on the stagecoach along with the driver with one of these. Uh, and you got a bunch of guys, a bunch of bad guys, you're going to rob the stagecoach or whatever your plans are. Well, you might rob it. You might be successful. But, boy, just knowing somebody there has a scatter gun and you're not going to get too close without maybe catching some buckshot. You may not get killed, but you might be blinded. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, not going to work out all that well for you, maybe. So, very intimidating. Yeah, that's why, you know, in the movie, apparently, in, in the actual shootout at the OK Corral, I don't know if we know what, what was actually said, but, you know, in the movie Tombstone, uh, who is it, Wyatt, tells Virgil to, you better give Doc the, the how street howitzer. You know, uh, they're likely to get, they're less likely to get nervy if Doc is, you know, got the tr street house or something like that. You know, they're less likely to get over the coffin. Oh my gosh, you know, see Doc Holliday, who 
has a reputation not worrying about what happens to him too much, right? And because he is dying, and uh, he has a shotgun, and he has a history of uh, causing people to uh, assume room temperature for whatever reason, you know. So uh, that combination of him having a shotgun, you know, a little bit scary. So anyway, you know what we ought to do? Oh, she was slow through this thing. <laughs> see what what happens i was pleasantly surprised when i uh what was it my it was my overland rossi or my stoger double uh shot slugs with it and wow i was able to hit things with it uh, which surprised me uh it's, i don't know double is just not you know i don't know they don't, they don't typically seem as slug friendly to me see i gotta work that lever and that's a negative okay Who knows where it's going to go, but I know it's going to go into the hillside. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sling uh, one at the buffalo over there, right down from the gong. I'll hold right on it, see where it goes. Y'all will be able to tell more than I will. I <laughs> know, I can tell too. <laughs> well, let's just see if we can sling one on the gong. I spoke too soon. I'm just too negative, right? So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Part of it, I don't know how the barrels are regulated and the sights and all that, but uh, also with a double, I don't know what it is. I don't know. I just don't feel as confident about shooting a bullet at distance and hitting what I want to hit. Uh, but I don't know. If you get your face down on that and look down the rib at that B, that brass bead. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. I like that. That's the first time I shot a slug in it. So we were experimenting together. All right. I got a jug over here to shoot. What have I got in here this time? Uh, yeah, Monarch. Okay. Yeah, got big hammer spurs. <laughs> Took care of that. Look at that. Yeah, nice. Nice. Yeah, if you want to be a real cowboy, oh, leave that smoke. You just have to experience a coach gun at some point. Really. I think Jeff Cooper even, uh, oh, he wrote about these. You know how you could do worse to hold a defense shotgun. Yeah. Two shots of 12 gauge. How much more are you going to need? You know, I want to shoot that bucket right there. Just cock it, I guess. Uh. Yeah. It's just a big old pan. Yeah, makes a nice target. Except I don't like the fact that it didn't go through it. So I'm going to grab a couple of these. I think that is number four. And we are going to pierce that thing. Ah, all right. Yeah, man. <laughs> number four is nice. It's one of my preferred uh, home defense rounds. It's number four, buck or shot, whatever. So I don't know what else to tell you other than it's just a, a nice shotgun. Uh, probably more than uh, you know most people are going to spend on a coach gun because you, know, you got the Stogers and there's a, there's some Chinese or Norinco. Uh, doubles and uh, there's some other brands. I don't know if you can get the Overland Rossies anymore, you know, but uh, there's others out there and they're not going to cost nearly this much. And there's some that do cost about this much. I, think, I forget what the CZ stands for. They make a nice, or, or sells for, they make a nice one too. I don't think it's in this category price wise. Uh, but you know, to each his own, you know, if uh, you want to really nice color case hardened with this look and all that kind of thing it, it might be exactly what the doctor ordered for you uh so yeah sweet if you have one of these and will admit it that you paid 1700 dollars for a, a a coach gun uh, let us know how it's done for you if you've got 10,000 rounds through it yet or 3,000 or whatever you fired if you any issues with it and what do you think about that uh that breakdown lever uh, needing to be activated. I mean, is that just me? I, I just, I'm just trying to think. Cause I did a fair amount of cowboy action shooting, 
and uh, you know the hammers alone you know you're you're limiting yourself a little bit if you're you know trying to win and, and really compete while you're doing it and a lot of people just do it strictly for fun and don't care where they end up on the score sheet and really don't care you know they just enjoy it uh, then but most people they kind of want to finish as high as they can with what they've got and there's there's different techniques for cocking you know both hammers with one hand different things because hammers you know do uh, give you a different uh, you know challenge but the hammers combined with that where you can't even close it up uh, I don't know you just have to learn how to work it I guess okay ah. how about a two liter Right. Oh boy, they put on a show. I'll shoot a couple more times to let you go. I, I see something would be nice to do a pattern. Let's see. There's one more round of the four. That's four buck, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, number four. I'll put it on that uh, old pizza pan down there. The right hammer is the right trigger, the right barrel. <laughs> Okay. Let's see what it looks like. I'll grab it real quick. Yeah. There you go. That's kind of a. I mean, that stuff is wicked, and that's kind of a thickish pan. So, yeah, number four buck is, is good stuff. Uh, I think. Everybody, boy, I shouldn't even say that. Everybody has a different opinion on shotguns and what to use for self-defense or that kind of thing. But uh, <laughs> a 12 gauge is a 12 gauge, right? So uh, anyway, I don't know what else to tell you about it. Uh, appreciate Cimarron making it. Appreciate uh, Buzz lending it to us. And expensive or not, you know, that, that, that's what it is. Uh, uh, kind of enjoy uh, showing you all firearms that are like on the really low end, uh, whether it's a high point or whatever as well as some some nicer shotguns have uh yeah you know, i have to tell you everybody has a different budget and interest uh, levels are are all over the place of course so uh anyway and in guns in general uh, i say cowboy guns but you know what i mean guns we associate with the west like this uh lever guns single actions uh, they have gotten expensive in, in recent years, haven't they? Uh, there's still some pretty good budget guns out there, but uh, they can also be, you know, really, really expensive. And uh, if you if you're trying to get into cowboy shooting competition, especially, uh, the people in that sport are really good about lending you a gun or two to get you started, you know. But because uh, you need really a couple of handguns, you know, single actions, and a shotgun, and a rifle. So if you just started from scratch. Uh, you got some purchasing to do, don't you? So, but anyway, uh, it is what it is, and uh, wanted to kind of give you an idea about that. And I'm pleased to, that <laughs> I might just buy one of these and make it my slug gun, right? So now I probably would not. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I can't see myself uh, paying that much for for one, even though it's a, it's a nice one. I can't. I'm not to discourage you, but. Uh, it's just a little high, but now I don't know what you might find one for. You might find it for a better price than that, uh, especially if you found a used one or something. But uh, it's, it's a little pricey. That is a big negative, I think. And, uh, and then that, that lever. Now I know, well, I'm not even gonna say it, but I know cowboy action shooters, many of them are, are uh, amateur gunsmiths and they tinker with their firearms to make them uh, safer, more efficient, and to uh, be able to be manipulated better and more quickly and all that kind of thing. You can kind of conclude what I'm getting at there, right? But uh, nice shotgun, uh, Doc Holliday. Uh, by the way, Doc Holliday, uh, a lot of that, I was reading something about him recently. Uh, uh, so many things in the West are just myth. He was really a dentist for real and an award-winning dentist, I read. And uh, he finished school, got his doctorate in dentistry and all this, even at an early age, at 20, I think. And they couldn't even give him his license to practice until for a while, until he was 21. 
about the laws or rules of all that. And uh, he, he really was an award-winning dentist, apparently. So that all is not just made up. He didn't just get the name Doc. You know, uh, look, like you may know someone called Doc, and they they never even been in a hospital uh, or a dentist's office. But uh, he he really was a, a very very uh, sharp fellow, and you know they, what I read indicated he got probably the tuberculosis from his mother, who died of it when uh, Doc Holliday was uh, like 15, something like that. So he probably got it, and that that's kind of a weird disease. It doesn't manifest itself, I don't think, right away. It just comes out later or whatever. And then he moved out west for the drier air, because that extends your life a little bit back then. And uh, it's not quite the problem now as it was back then. So I know you were dying to know that. And uh, so anyway, this gun is named in his honor. And uh, I'm proud to shoot it. And uh, Doc, if you're up there looking down, uh, you know, appreciate your, uh, uh, your patience with us, you know, and uh, hope you're watching us enjoy your shotgun. Life is good. Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it, uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at TalonGunGrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastall. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastall for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballastall.com, talongungrips.com, and also while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.